In this video, we will understand the process of alpha radioactivity through the tunneling effect phenomenon in quantum mechanics. Alpha radioactivity corresponds to the emission of an alpha particle, that is, a helium nucleus composed of two neutrons and two protons. This particle is ejected from a heavy nucleus. However, uh, according to classical mechanics, such ejection is forbidden. The alpha particle is confined inside the nucleus by a potential barrier of Columbian origin. This potential barrier is equivalent to the charge of the, the protons inside divided by the distance between times a Coulomb factor. This potential barrier is higher than the kinetic energy of the alpha particle, which would classically prevent any exit. Yet, uh, this emission is observed experimentally. This is where uh, quantum mechanics, and more specifically the tunneling effect, comes into play. The quantum interpretation of radioactivity uh, uh, was proposed in 1920 by George Gamow. He notably calculated the transmission coefficient. That is to say, uh, the probability that an alpha particle passes through the potential barrier and is emitted. First, we will recall what the tunnel effect is through the example of the potential barrier. We will calculate the reflection and transmission coefficients from the Schrödinger equation. Then, we will apply this formalism to the case of a heavy nucleus by modeling the Coulomb potential barrier and then following Gamow's method to deduce the transmission probability. So, we will start with the first part, potential barrier. In this first part, we will see the solution of the Schrödinger equation when a particle is subjected to a potential, which, is, uh, which corresponds to a barrier of height v0. So the potential is modeled by the function, the following equation, so v of x is equal to v0 between 0 and a, and is equal to 0 and u. Let's first recall what a quantum state is. In quantum mechanics, the particle uh, is modeled or is associated with a state, so a complex wave function that characterizes its physical state. For a free quantum, the interpretation of PSI is that the dp is equal to the squared modulus of PSI squared times dx corresponds to the probability of finding the particle in an interval x and x plus dx. So that's everything we know uh, in physics about the shadow function. This interpretation was introduced by Max Born. The probability is normalizable, meaning that the integral from negative infinity to positive infinity of dp equals 1, which means SI of x and t squared dx. The wave function is homogeneous to a length uh, to the power of minus 1 half. So the unitless probability of x is homogeneous to a length Therefore, psi is homogeneous to 1 over the square root of length. One can also introduce a ROR, which is equal to d of p over dx, which is equal to psi of x and t squared. This corresponds to the linear density of probabilities. So here I repeat the unique one since we are working in only one dimension, thus along the x-axis. Uh, from this linear density aperture, we can make the analogy with electromagnetism. That is to say, one can construct a conservation equation as in electromagnetism. In electromagnetism, the conservation equation is the second derivative of aperture with respect to time plus the divergence of j, which transforms into the second derivative of j with respect to x in one dimension, is equal to zero. It's a conservation equation. g is the density, it's the probability density vector. Off charge, uh, in the case of electromagnetism. So, uh, we will make the analogy with electromagnetism. So, RO in electromagnetism is uh, the density of charge charge density, that is to say dq over dv. And we also know that j in electromagnetism is equal to rho times q. Uh, 